Well, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2. We're going to read verses 16 through 18 in just a a minute. Um, If you want to, you can go back and watch our Christmas Eve service online. We had some amazing music. Uh, Mr. David Dudley led us in candlelight singing, but also Randy Beach played guitar. How many of y'all saw the Christmas Eve service online? How many of y'all were able to watch it? Okay. All right. So some of y'all did. Um, You can also see Brandy read the scripture. Luke played a little outro at the end. And Lydia did a benediction. It was a lot of fun. Um, But I shared a couple of interesting news stories. And uh, it's really funny. When I start researching fun news stories, I always come across more material than I'm able to squeeze into a sermon. But one of the news stories that really caught my attention was that in Florida, there was a warning that went out this week. Of course, you know, Florida is really warm. Um, It might be a great place to go vacation. If you remember the plot from Home Alone 2, the family was going to go to Florida to celebrate Christmas. Well, there was a special warning that went out because the temperatures were going to go from a high of 80 one day to down into the 30s for the low. And it was this. It said, watch out for falling iguanas. Watch out for falling iguanas. In South Florida, they have these giant scary things called iguanas. They look like giant lizards. I remember on my honeymoon, we were somewhere in the Caribbean, and I was enjoying some shade up under the tree, and I said, what the heck is that? And then I couldn't relax because these giant things. Well, what happens in Florida, they have them down there too, and when it gets cold, these animals, they don't die from the cold, but they become immobile and can't move, and they fall out of the trees. And I guess if you were just um, one in a million, it would actually fall and hit you while you're walking up under a tree, but it it makes a, a clever headline. Watch out for the falling iguanas. Uh, Your perfect Christmas could be ruined um, by an iguana falling on your head. Well, the passage we're going to look at in just a minute is something that we needed to be on the lookout for if we lived during Jesus's time. The Christmas story, we think of the manger and how lovely of a scene it was with the shepherds coming in, what we celebrated and read on Christmas night. But Everything didn't go so well for everybody involved in this story. And I want us to ponder what happened and what it might teach us today living 2,000 years ago. So if you have your Bibles, the words are going to be up on the screen. But I'm going to read chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. To give you a little bit of an uh, introduction to one of the characters here, the main character here is Herod. He was the king over this area of especially the Jewish people, and he was a ruthless king. He even killed some of his own family members. He was somebody who was obsessed, like most kings or dictators are, of holding on to power. And not only did he think about who might immediately try to overtake him, but he was thinking down the road what might happen. And of course, the wise men, we call them the wise men, but they did a couple unwise things. They're wandering around and they go up to the king and they say, king, we want to meet the new king. You know, you're cool and we're glad to see you, but we heard there's a new king on the way that's just been born. Now, how do you think that's going to make a king feel? Not too good about himself, okay? And so he's like, hey, I want to come worship this new king too, wink, wink. And so the the wise men, on their way back, an angel has to come and say, don't do that. That's not smart to do. Don't go tell the king where Jesus is. And so this is where we're picking up the story. Verse 16, when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. And he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under. This kind of sounds like a different story in the Bible. Does anybody remember a story similar to this? You can say it if you remember. Yeah, Moses in Exodus. Yeah, the story of all the kids being slaughtered. All right, so two years and under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. So he said, okay, let me do the math, okay? Um, The wise men probably, even though they're in our nativity scene being their Christmas night, they probably didn't come right on Christmas night. It might have been a little bit of time after. So Herod's doing the math in his head. He's like, okay, if there's this king who's going to be overthrown, you know, I'm not sure exactly how old that baby was. So any baby two years old and under that's a man, that's a male, is killed. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled 
because they are no more. I have a a light and uh, talkative delivery as a pastor, but these words are harsh. These words are sad. And I want them to sink in for a moment. As we ponder the joy of Christmas, Jesus and his parents flee out of that land and innocent children are slaughtered who had no guilt of anything they did except they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. The happy story of the Savior is born has this brutal side to the story where babies are murdered. So what does this passage mean for us? At the end of a tough year, what does this story tell us about our life as we stand at the end of 2020 and we peer over in the edge to a new year what does this harsh reality tell us well here's what I want to remind you as we celebrate a great Christmas and as we celebrate happiness and joy I want to remind you though just for a moment that trouble will come in 2021 that there will be hard moments. I don't know if y'all remember or not, but at the start of 2020, we did a series called 2020 Vision. I was one of about 20,000 pastors in the United States that did a series called 2020 Vision, and we were like, this is what I think God's going to do for us. We were all very wrong about what 2020 was going to look like. We were very, very off. And as we get ready for this year, hopefully we're going to just skyrocket out of this pandemic. Hopefully the economy is going to go good. Hopefully people are going to be able to travel. Hopefully uh, the church is going to flourish and people are going to come back. I'm hoping all these good things happen and cross my fingers and praying and asking God for that to be. But I also want to remind us that no matter how good of moments we can have, but there also will be challenges in this up coming year. You see, we live in a broken world. We had this beautiful holiday Christmas, but we also saw this national tragic story where somebody set off a bomb in the heart of Nashville. We know that there will be tough moments for us. We might not experience something as scary as being in some kind of possible terrorist attack, but we will have hardship. We will lose loved ones, some of us. We will have scary diagnoses. We will have transitions with jobs, with life, with family. We may find ourselves in a scary and sad situation. So I want to challenge you today. I want to ask you, as we are looking forward to the start of a new year and getting out of this year, I want to ask you, and I want you to ponder this morning, What type of person do you want to be at the end of December 2021? What type of person do you want to be at the end of next year? What type of person, as we wrap up Christmas 365 days from now, do you want to be? Knowing that there may be some good things coming, knowing that there may be some hardships. What type of person do you want to be? Do you want to be more peaceful? Maybe you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to work out. Maybe you want to get out of debt. What are some of the things that you want to do? And then I want to challenge you and ask you, what type of person do you want to be spiritually? Do you want to worry less? Do you want to have a closer walk with God? Do you want to know that if you face some type of hardship like we see in today's passage, that you will be able to cry out to God. What type of person do you want to be? I'm going to give you a couple word pictures to think about. One of my mentors, Dr. Brian Russell, is the dean of Asbury Orlando, and I meet with him a couple times a month for coaching. And he likes to come up with one word to define his year. And he said this past year, his word was curious. He wanted to stay curious. And man, did he have a good year to stay curious. He had to um, move to teaching all his classes online. So he had to learn how to do online teaching exclusively. Um, He had to learn how to be quarantined together with his family. And his wife worked in hospitality in Orlando. She, of course, lost her job. And so she's trying to switch career fields. And he said that word served him good. But I want to share with you the word that he said is his word for 2021. 
And it is this, it's reservoir. You know what a reservoir is? Okay, it's one of those, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a pond. It's a holding area for water, okay? A reservoir, the water runs into it and it fills up. And then eventually there's like a spillway. So once it gets all the way full, the reservoir runs over a little bit. And he says, I want to be a reservoir for the way that I teach students, the way I prepare leaders for church. I want to get so full of God's presence in my life that it just bubbles over and that's what I lead out of. Um, he said he didn't want to be a canal. Y'all know, y'all know what a canal is or a river. The water comes in and it just runs straight through. And as preachers, that's what we do sometimes, to be honest with you. We're, Sunday's always coming. The term papers do every single Sunday. So it's like finals week. Every single week, I got to look something up. I got to make sure that I'm prepared. I got to make sure that it's documented well. I got to make sure that there's not too many yawns. Although with everybody, most people wearing masks, I don't see y'all yawning as much. So that's one of the happy side effects of it. There's this pressure for leaders. And let me be honest, that's not unique for preachers. We all do that. We're always just like trying to get stuff done, letting it run through us and get things done. But he challenged me and said he wants to lead out of a reservoir. For me, my word is I want to rest in 2021. I don't want to do less work, but I want to slow down so that I can enjoy God's presence. I've challenged y'all several times, and we'll probably do this a couple more times this year, to stop at 1212 and pray. And so I'll have a timer go off or around that time. I will try to pause and really reflect on God's presence for several minutes. I'll try to do that in the morning. I'd like to take a like Sabbath, like hard stop at one point of the day and not do any church stuff until the next day. But for me, I really like my job. I really like church. I like serving y'all. Um, So that's hard for me to slow down and be present with my family sometimes. I want to be able to rest in God's presence and let that rest be reflected in the way that I'm able to show up and preach, knowing that I'm not in control, that I'm able to enjoy God's presence. I want to be like a person who chops wood all fall and then is able to build a fire and enjoy the fire during the winter. I want that to be my relationship with God, that I'm able to put in the work to grow closer to God so that when the hard times come, when the traumatizing times come, like we've read from this passage, that I will have a strong relationship with God. If there's one thing that I think this passage pulls out is that this prophecy from the Old Testament, they talk about how Rachel is weeping for her children and she's, uh, she's not able to be consoled by other people, but it's implied that she is crying out to God. I think really if we want to be the best versions of ourselves at the end of 2021, it's going to be developing this relationship where we grow closer to God, where we talk to God more, where we enjoy his presence more. Don't worry, I'm going to have plenty of stuff for you to sign up and do for the church in this next year, and I might even have to twist some of your arms and try to get you in leadership positions, and that's going to be important. But the most important thing is not going to be that. It's going to be your relationship with God and how you're growing closer. This next year, we're going to see leadership changes in our country, and it's normal to be anxious about that. Uh, Most of us, or some of us, will probably, if our doctor tells us to, might go and get the vaccine, and it's going to be normal to be worried about that. It's normal to be anxious about what is happening in your family and normal to be anxious about your future. These things are normal, but what do we do with them? When we face hardship, are we going to be people who cling to God or not? What type of person do you want to be at the end of the year? So this past week, y'all know we called an audible on our Christmas Eve service. Christmas Eve is, you know, a time of getting together with family, but for preachers, it's also like our Super Bowl. Um, We're trying to get everything ready, and we made the call last Sunday to move everything online. And it was a chaotic time for me as a preacher um, because I'm trying to film music, and then I'm trying to film my family do their speaking parts. I'm trying to make sure my sermon's done. And then y'all should have seen, like, the computer speed we have is so slow at the parsonage and at the church. Uh, 
we called to ask about upgrading and they said we don't even sell what y'all have anymore <laughs> it's so slow and so uh, my plan was to have both services on Facebook and on YouTube go live at 4 and I started uploading them and it looked like they'd be done in time and then I woke up and it looked like it was uploaded but then it wasn't this is this is the reality of online worship it is so frustrating and so I'm like supposed to go do stuff with family but I'm also like trying to pull out my hair trying to figure out what to do and so I'm re-uploading stuff I'm hoping that it goes through and then to get it on YouTube all my a lot of my friends who watch on YouTube they're able to put it on their big screen TV but if it's on Facebook it's harder to do that you're more likely to watch it on your phone and so some of my friends are like it's not on YouTube yet and I'm like okay let me let me try and so I'm running around I'm having an anxiety attack trying to get this done that's not who I want to be in 2021. I want to be a person who says, God, what do I need to do today so that I can enjoy your presence in certain moments, but also that I'm a non-anxious presence later on. And so for me, sometimes that's going to be, saying, be me saying, no, I can't, I can't commit to putting this online. But for the most part, it's going to be me saying, I can't commit to staying up too late watching TV a couple nights before. I need to go ahead and get that done. I need to go ahead and make sure that I have a plan for my spiritual formation that day because I know the day after will be tough and busy. I've got to say, God, how can I enjoy that rest with you and build that relationship with you through scripture, through prayer, so that I will be ready for the challenges that I face later on. Do not wait for something traumatic to happen to you like in our passage today. Be somebody who is ready to grow closer to God each and every day so that, that no matter what hardship we face, we will cry out and turn to God and face it, not alone, but with the triune God present with us. Would you pray with me? God, help us to face whatever hard times wait for us in this upcoming year. We pray for peace and prosperity. We pray for your blessing on this upcoming year. But we know just like in this passage that random and bad things happen as a result of our broken and free will. God, help us no matter what we face in this upcoming year to be people who have already cultivated habits to grow closer to you. Help us to not try harder, but to slow down and enjoy your presence with us more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.